Um, I'm speaking next. <laughs> and I'm speaking about real food for kids. So here it is. This is my Brisbane paleo family. Um, I'm Leah, obviously. You've all met me just before. And my husband, Patrick. And my son, Sydney, he's five years old. And my daughter, Iris, who's two years old. So a lot of you have probably already heard my story, but all my life I struggled with my weight. Um, I was raised on a pretty normal standard Australian diet of a couple of lumps of wheat bix for breakfast with sugar sprinkled on top of that and a big dump of cow's milk and um, probably some food in between there for morning tea and then after that for lunch I'd have a very typical white piece of bread with margarine and Vegemite on it and for dinner it was usually a piece of burnt steak and white potatoes. <laughs> And, um, and I think, you know, most of you can relate to that. I think that's pretty standard um, around that time. And I continued to, devel to develop weight issues through my um, childhood into my adulthood. And then I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is an underactive thyroid condition. It's an autoimmune condition. And, in, and I thought, you beaut, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm just going to take a magic pill and I'm going to lose all the weight and, and that'll be it. But that didn't actually happen, and I went on to put on quite a bit more weight. And then when I had my son, Sydney, I was exhausted, and I had gut issues, I had digestive issues, I, had, um, I was tired, I was overweight, and, you know, and I just didn't feel like myself anymore, and that was really hard being a first-time mum, but also I just didn't feel like me. Um, so... He was really the driver for me to do something about that, but I just couldn't fathom doing another diet. I just couldn't face doing another low-fat, calorie-restricted diet. So I um, went and joined CrossFit, <laughs> which sounds like a really strange thing to do, but I thought I would out-exercise my weight issue. But when I got there, I actually discovered a community that was really interested in eating real food and paleo way of life. And within a few weeks, I started feeling fantastic and we, I came home and I said to my husband, we're going to keep doing this um, paleo way of life. And he was like, oh, great, another diet. <laughs> um, but being the supportive husband that he is, because he's home minding the two kids today, um, he, he agreed. And he's never had, you can tell by looking at him, he has never really had many weight issues in his life. But um, he started feeling fantastic and having a lot of energy. And so that's when we decided we would do this um, as a family. This way of eating really made sense to us. And so around a few years back, at, I was sitting in the audience at Low Carb Down Under and I saw Jimmy Moore speaking and they um, said if you know, anyone's had any great success stories because I went on to lose 30 kilos um, to let everybody know about it. So I started my blog or my page, Brisbane Paleo Family, to show parents that a busy mum with two small children, a husband that works away from time to time, works part time, can eat this way, then anyone should be able to eat this way. So um, we started Brisbane Paleo Group as well at the same time for community and motivation and help each other and guide each other through the challenges that we face. And then it was time to look at what my children was eating. And I think a lot of mums can relate to this. Usually start with yourself, thinking about what it is that you're eating, and then, or even parents, sorry, can think about this. And then you think, what is it that I'm actually feeding my children? So uh, Sydney um, was really the catalyst for that because he was he'd been eating a lot of other foods at the time. And I was sitting um, watching Pete Evans um, a little while back, and he said that our children aren't expected to live longer than us. And like, I've got goosebumps just saying that. And I just think that is really what is going on with today's world if that's the case. Why are so many people unwell? Why are there so many allergies and food intolerances? When you ask people how they are, they don't say they're well, they say they're busy. And I'm, I do that as well. Um, you know, what's really in our food these days? You know, don't, if it's only, um, less than 5% of whatever it is that they're putting in the food, then they do, in packaged food, then they don't have to actually state that. And there's over 150 autoimmune conditions and counting. So I can imagine a lot of you in this room already today have an autoimmune condition. So, so that made me start thinking what it is that I'm feeding my children. I've looked at myself, what it is that I'm feeding my children and what's going on in today's world. So 
this is a little bit about our transition and what we did with, with the children, and which I'm sure you can probably adapt to a fussy adult eater as well, some of the tips that we applied. And um, so my son, he would, he'd be eating on average um, a, a white sandwich, much like what I had when I grew up, um, a, a packaged, his food, his lunchbox was basically full of sugar and it was full of um, packaged foods. And he was drinking um, an enormous amount of apple juice per day, or apple, it wasn't even apple juice, it was apple drink. So, um, and then how we went from that to, that's my daughter eating butter. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my son actually holding a zucchini grew. <laughs> so Sydney's typical day before was wheat bix, honey, cow's milk. He actually had croup a lot as a child. He would get this recurring, really chesty, heavy cough. And um, it was sometimes it was terrifying. We would have to rush to the emergency centre and then they would give him something to take um, to open his airwaves up and it just made me start thinking about what it, what's going on there and doctors saying, oh, you know, eventually he might get asthma. And I was like, oh, well, is there anything we can do to prevent that? Um, and he'd be having packaged flavoured yoghurt, tiny teddies, that was a favourite in our house, and, you know, constant tantrums. He was a really fussy, picky eater. He'd be standing out the fridge and cupboard demanding more food. He was tired, he was cranky, and that was a lot like me before I found paleo. <laughs> And then I was doing some research, and I really like the Whole Nine Life. Um, you can look them up on the internet. It's just whole9life.com, and they do the Whole 30 as well, which is 30 days of strict paleo. And um, these articles really changed how I looked at things. So one was five ways science can get your kids to eat vegetables. I just want to say, too, that, you know, um, while I'm up here saying these are all the things we tried, let's just say, let's just know that it wasn't easy either. We did have lots of tantrums and tears in between that from me and them. So, um, but it's, it's how we started and how we experimented and what we did. So I don't want anyone to think that it just happened overnight and that it was really easy. It was a transition. So um, the first point in the article was to start children early. So I'd already missed that with Sydney. But with Iris, she was raised a paleo baby. So she was, I was paleo when I conceived her. I was paleo as she was in the womb. And then um, we, her first foods that we gave her were actually bone broth, ooh, dangerous bone broth. <laughs> Don't give your children bone broth. And um, with mashed sweet potato and um, egg and those type of things that a lot of people say to stay away from. So, um, and I could say that she actually has a much wider palate and is more willing to try new foods than he ever was who wasn't raised that way. The second um, point in the article that I really liked was timing is everything and patience is a virtue. So, you know, pick the right time that you're going to feed the children. So, um, you know, when they're tired and hungry and come home from school or daycare, it's not really the best time to try and introduce new foods. So a lot of parents often sit down and try and introduce new foods at dinner time tired, cranky, just want to eat, not willing to try that Brussels sprout that you just put on their plate, that's probably a lot of big part of that reason. Um, what we do is, you know, if we, uh, on Saturday and a Sunday, we actually like to have the old fashioned Saturday and Sunday lunch that you might have had when you were growing up and we'll put all the food down on the table and we'll just get them to try things like a big platter or in different bowls and it's like, you know, here, try this vegetable. No, don't want to try that. Okay, well, you know, give it a little taste. What is it that you don't like about it? Is it the colour? Is it the texture? Come on, just a little taste. Oh, it actually tastes good. Starts eating it. So, you know, it's just about picking your time and um, trying different things with them. So, yeah, repeated exposure as well. So um, I never make different meals for my children. They eat what we are eating. And the more times I put it down on the plate, eventually they're going to come around and eat it anyway, or they're going to get hungry. <laughs> so the third point I really liked was tasting the rainbow. So um, a study found that colourful food's more appealing to children than adults. So um, we put um, the platters down on the table, very colourful and visually appealing, and then we'd let the, ch the kids choose off there. Other, th other things we like to do is just have a bit of fun with the food. So, you know... We, we do sometimes, if we have time, make funny faces out of the food or we might throw purple carrots in there or something that we've found at the markets that's a bit different. So um, get, getting them to try, you know, purple carrots is just like a really amazing um, treat for them. <laughs> and 
The fourth point was familiar is good. So around the age of two, kids start becoming unwilling to try new tastes. And I think that was probably a lot of the problem with Sydney as well, because he was, only, he was a bit after that age when we first started trying to um, introduce things. So um, try and introduce kale and broccoli and spinach before then. And from an evolutionary perspective, this makes sense. If young children strayed from the typical foods hunted or foraged in their area, they were more likely to run into trouble. So, but in today's modern world, and we are modern paleo family, um, this means that if you're not introduced kale or broccoli or spinach by terrible twos, you'll be likely having a hard time getting them to eat them by then. So, the, so one tip that you can do if you are having trouble getting them to eat it is put their food with something that's familiar. So if you know that they're going to eat mashed sweet potato, then mixing a bit of broccoli in with that sweet potato or a bit of cauliflower or something that they wouldn't normally like mixed in with something that they already enjoy the taste of will help them as well. And monkey see, monkey do. So we all know um, mim mimicry is children really like to mimic us. Um, I've quite heard my little parrots um, sprouting words that I might have said in the house <laughs> from time to time. So, <laughs> so they are watching you and they are, you know, learning from you. So um, one tip is to make a big deal about how great the food tastes. So, you know, this broccoli tastes fantastic. I love it. <laughs> um, you know, make a big production of dipping each bite of asparagus into a dressing and smile heartily with each bite. But you get the idea anyway. Um, big hooray, it's Brussels sprout night. <laughs> but you've got to act like you really mean it as well though. <laughs> we actually found that our children were always hungry around that 5, 5.30 time, but we weren't hungry then and we wanted to delay our meal time. And so what would often happen would be I'd make dinner and put it down on the table and not eat with them, and then I'd be in the kitchen doing something else, or you know, I might just sit with them but not eat. And we found that they didn't want to eat. If we weren't eating, why would they want to eat? So um, we then just decided to kind of just jiggle around with the times, and we eventually made a time that was suitable for all of us to eat together. And we found by eating at six o'clock, the children were more willing to eat um, with us. But what happened was, coming home from work, it was really hard to get in the kitchen and get everything done. So we would actually make the next night's dinner after the kids had gone to bed and then just reheat it and eat it the next day. So when we come home, dinner is ready. I'm not stressing about trying to get dinner ready. And then we have it on the table and we sit down and we all eat together. The second article I, re I read and really enjoyed was describing vegetables with catchy names increases in affinity for greens. So this was um, a couple of studies that were conducted to explore whether a simple change such as using attractive names would influence kids' consumption of vegetables. In a school they called plain carrots, x-ray vision carrots, and they found that 66% of them were eaten that day as opposed to 32% when named food of the day or 35% when they were unnamed. And, you know, and this is a really interesting article, and um, after the event, I'll send it out to everyone because there's some other things that they did. And the, the people were so excited because this is such an easy way to get kids to eat food that doesn't cost anything, you know? So we went, right, this is great. We got some plain chicken, and we stuck toothpicks in it because kids love anything off a toothpick, and we called it chicken on a stick, and wow, here they are eating their chicken. <laughs> we thought, wow, this is a bit easy. We'll try it again the next night. We um, put some carrots down on a plate, and Sydney at the time loved the Cows movie, and carrots became Cows Kapow Carrots, you know. And he loved those Cows Kapow Carrots, and broccoli became mini trees, and they loved the book The Gruffalo, so we had Gruffalo Steak and Scrambled Snake, and they started eating their food. So something so easy and so simple that you can try straight away at home. So um, looking at all those things and, and experimenting and doing a bit of research, we then transitioned. So we got Sydney off the wheat bix by giving him some of those, some paleo granola. We'd make some ourselves or we might um, buy some pre-packaged ones there are, um, that paleo brand ones. Um, with almond milk, I still give them a little bit of Greek yogurt and I just don't give them anything packaged. I just got a whole lot of little Tupperware containers, put the Greek yogurt in there, a handful of frozen berries, and actually like the taste of that. Um, we had a bit of fun with our food. We tried pancakes, um, waffles, waffles made from just eggs and cashew nuts. They quite like that, so it could be our fun weekend food that we have. 
Um, we tried some green smoothies and we're just watching the fruit in those, mainly vegetable ones. Um, we got, got them used to the idea of eating leftovers for lunch rather than sandwiches. Platters on the table, like I said before, and we got rid of that apple juice and we um, gave them some kombucha. Obviously, we, gave them, we were giving them water anyway, but we tried the kombucha, which is a probiotic drink. So that's my daughter up in the top corner. She's eating um, scrambled eggs, snake scrambled eggs or something with, um, with some sauerkraut. She absolutely loves sauerkraut. Um, we, we still do the foods that, are sim that other kids eat. So that's our version of chicken nuggets, which is just covered in coconut. Um, tacos, which just are without the taco shell. Um, a little snack that they really like, which I think is a really special um, dessert, is banana with a bit of coconut crunch, which is just coconut on top, and um, cacao nibs. Waffles. Omelettes in their lunchbox, so they don't mind eating a cold omelette um, with a little bit of ham and um, tomato in it. Platters on the table that you can see there, and um, having a bit of fun with the pancakes. Um, a lot of people always ask me about lunchbox ideas. So just recently I saw on Gary's page um, was Dom's Kitchen. She's got an, a really, really great range of um, lunchbox ideas with those lovely metal lunchbox containers. Um, such a great resource. Go there and have a look at all their, their real food options. I quite like Nom Nom Paleo as well. She does a lot of food options. And she's just great in general um, for meal planning and meal ideas as well. And last... Um, yeah, everyone would have seen, uh, who was here would have seen Lisa Sherger speak, and she's got a page called Diabetic Alien, which is just full of really great pages, so I just wanted to remind you guys of her website. So our journey began with food, but we really got so much more out of food, out of it than just food. So what we've started doing is what I like to call the ceremony of eating. So when we sit down at the table, we turn off all the electronic devices. This is really hard. No TV, no phones, nothing. We sit down. We get the kids involved with setting and decorating the table. Um, so the picture in the corner there, you can see we've drawn pictures and stuck them around the wall to decorate the, <laughs> the house. We've put a tablecloth down. We went and picked flowers out of the garden, just making a little bit of fun out of dinner time. We um, talk about the food we're eating. We um, connect as a family. We started growing our own food. That's Sydney up in part of our um, garden patch. We got chickens and we got the children involved in cooking. So rather than me in the kitchen by myself, um, Iris is standing on a little stool there beside the kitchen bench. And she actually, as I'm chopping up the veggies and stuff, she'll just grab it and start eating it. And I don't discourage that. She's going to be eating that food anyway. So she's just experimenting. She's wanting to try. She's wanting to taste. She's wanting to help. So I'm not going to let push her out of the kitchen. And um, I'm going to encourage that. And we re really reconnected back with our kitchen again because for so long we were just grabbing takeaway or grabbing meals and throwing them in the microwave because we were busy and tired. And so now we do a big cook up on the weekend and we have our meals ready for the rest of the week. So now I've got a couple of real food kids. <laughs> That's Iris, <laughs> Not yet, two years old, reading the Clean Living Cookbook by Scott and Luke. <laughs> And um, Sydney's out there feeding the chickens and collecting the eggs, which is one of his favourite things to do. So from here, you know, everyone's heard the story, calm parents, calm kids. That definitely works. If you're calm and um, eating dinner in a calm and controlled manner, you're going to likely to have more success. 90% of diseases are caused by stress. I read that statistic somewhere, so that's huge. And just do the best you can do. Some days you'll have some wins, some days you won't, and you just gotta keep on trying, and as, as a parent, I'm sure you know that. Do your research, find what works best for you. Create your own ceremony of eating. So your ceremony of eating might not be like setting out the table, it might be just as simple as sitting down together, getting away from sitting at the TV, sitting down together. Um, so creating whatever ceremony works and resonates well for you and your family. And the support and community of Brisbane Paleo Group, seeking like-minded parents that really know and understand what you're going through. So join the community, it's free, like I said before, and you'll end up with some junior foodies on your hands as well. <laughs> so thanks everyone. Thank